Oh, well, Globy, I think I'm properly prepared for what lies ahead. I guess you could say this coat is my adaptation for cold weather. Mm -hmm. Ah, what is an adaptation, asked my trusty companion. An adaptation is a structure, maybe a part of the body, or a behavior, like putting on a coat that helps a living thing survive in its environment. Some adaptations help living things meet their needs. Others keep them safe. Still others help living things live in different climates. And believe me, I'm gonna need this adaptation where we're headed. We're gonna study winter, the history of winter. Once a year since 2001, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center helps host the History of Winter program in Lake Placid, New York. Lake Placid is in the Adirondack Mountains in New York. This area gets more snowfall than any other region in the state. That makes it a really good place to study winter. Well, you might be wondering, why would NASA want to study winter? Well, because learning about what lies beneath the snow and ice helps us learn about what's occurring in our world. An important part of NASA involves studying Earth. NASA is very interested in what's happening both on and around our home planet. Looking into a snow and ice biome allows scientists to study plants and animals that live there. A biome is the area where certain plants and animals live. Winter biomes can be really harsh, so the plants and animals that live there may need some special adaptations to survive. Let's hear more from an expert. Well, it's a different challenge during winter for all species to uh, live and survive and find their way of, of making a living. So in the snow biomes, it gives us a different perspective on how difficult and how important those critical adaptations are, where they have to deal in a big way of their lives in areas where there's snow and ice and cold a good portion of the year. So what kind of life can you find in the snow? Some of the animals who live above the snow on a regular basis are caribou, arctic hare, and then uh, some of the animals that take advantage of living under the snow are things like arctic brown squirrels, all the little invertebrates, meadow voles are perfect at living under the snow, some birds like ptarmigan and grouse, they'll nestle themselves in the top of snowpack and actually stay in there for many days and ride out a blizzard. So there are a lot of animals who, uh, on a regular basis, do very well living through the winter in snowpack. So some of the adaptations these animals use help them find shelter. What other adaptations might you see in a winter biome? Do these animals have to do what I did and pull out their winter coats? Some of the um, animals like canids, the dog species, wolves and uh, fox, they put on extra coat. Uh, they have uh, insulating uh, long hair and they're very well adapted to the winter. Little invertebrates and frogs create a chemical and can withstand freezing solid and they won't rupture their cells because they have kind of like an antifreeze that we use in our cars to keep the cells from rupturing. Frogs have a type of internal antifreeze? How about that? What are some other adaptive wonders of nature? Some uh, important adaptations, for example, in snowshoe hare, is they have very large feet. It's almost like they have snowshoes on. It gives them a little bit extra ability to be on top of the snow. So now we know some of the ways animals adapt to the cold, but I bet with a little more research, you could find more cool adaptations. But how do scientists go about studying all of this? They build a snow pit. In order to study some of the different properties of snow, we can dig the nice smooth surface straight down so that you can see it's actually a record of the entire winter from top to bottom. And the top would be the most recent snowfalls and the bottom would be the very start of winter when the first snowfall fell. You might not be able to see every day, but it gives you a week by week or event by event record of the entire winter. So what can we learn from studying these snow pits? If you look at a snow pit, you have a whole record of what happened through the winter. And that gives you some idea of how the animals that live at the bottom can take advantage of that structure of snow. Snow pits are good not only to understand 
how snow falls and what the record is, but also to see how animals who live within that snowpack can uh, make it through the winter. Wow, Globy, NASA's History of Winter program is awesome, and anyone can get involved. Just go to the History of Winter website, right there. Just one more question. Next year, can I come? <laughs>